I know the minute you guys see the Apple logo in the thumbnail, you must have rushed in here thinking we got our hands on the new iPhones. But sadly, that's not the case. We are getting the new iPhones. The unboxings will be out soon. But while we wait, let's give you Apple fans something to cheer about. iOS 11 is out after spending months being in beta, and boy does it pack a ton of new features. You may not be able to see some of them right away though. To help you with that, here's a list of 25 tips and tricks that I'm sure you're going to find very useful. So without further ado, let's get stuck. Wait, wait. I forgot to do my intro in all the excitement. I'm Sundar, the resident Apple geek. You're watching C4E Tech and finally, let's get started. Let's begin with what most of us love about iPhones. Yep, the camera. The interface now lets us use filters by just swiping up anywhere from the bottom. There are some new filters now, including this one, Silver Tone, which looks really cool on portraits. The camera app finally lets us scan QR codes, a nifty little feature that's been available on third-party apps for a long time, but having it in the stock camera app is definitely added convenience. Another welcome move is the ability to use HDR or LED flash in portrait mode. Yes, iOS 11 lets you do that. The execution is just as good, even in poor lighting conditions. Nice. The depth information also gets stored along with the picture, so we can now remove the bokeh effect in the photos app after clicking the picture. Just tap edit and toggle the portrait option here. The photos app now lets us change the preview of a live photo. Again, just tap edit, select the frame which you like the most and tap make key photo. And done. The app has also finally gained support for GIF files. Just save a GIF photo from somewhere and we'll be able to view it in the photos app. The photos themselves might eat up a lot of the storage space. To minimize the damage, Apple now lets you shoot in HEIF and HEVC formats for photo and video respectively. Choose high efficiency here and the photos and videos you shoot will have significantly reduced file sizes. When you email them though, they'll be converted to JPEG and MP4 automatically, just so the receiver can view them without compatibility issues. 16 gig iPhone owners are going to love this feature. Next up, the control center, which is now beautiful and is my favorite UI change in iOS 11. It's also functionally better. You can add toggles like low power mode and screen recording. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles work quite differently too. When you hit say the bluetooth toggle instead of turning the bluetooth off it just disconnects you from all the bluetooth networks you might be connected to so the phone still got bluetooth on and is actively scanning apple's explanation here is that they are used for apple's file transfer and streaming add drop and add play do you feel the added convenience here is a security risk let us know in the comments below coming back thanks to 3d touch the control center is now limited to just a single page hard press on a toggle to get more options like different camera modes volume control and so on. Hey, where's the night shift mode? Again, hard press on the brightness bar. There it is. Moving on, iOS now lets you record your screen. I've added the toggle to the control center. Just tap to start recording. You can also simultaneously record audio using the internal microphone. Cool. We even get to edit screenshots now. Just tap the preview. Here we can scribble, add signatures, text, shapes like circle and rectangle and so on. I can imagine this being more fun and convenient on an iPad with an Apple Pencil. There's also a slew of features hidden under accessibility. iOS 11 lets you tweak the display to a great extent. Under display accommodations, you can adjust the hue, tint, and even enable grayscale for a system-wide black and white look. Come back, and here you can enable a dark mode of sorts. This inverts the colors throughout the UI, but keeps the media colors intact. Unfortunately, though, that happens only in the Photos app. Most apps like Chrome and even Apple's own Safari inverts everything including photos and videos. Talking about accessibility settings, here's another hidden feature. Enable this, now activate Siri. There you go. You can now type your request or query instead of saying it. It's just an additional method of input. Of course, speaking also works. Next up, here's an option to make your iPhone answer your incoming phone calls automatically. You can set the duration here. Neat. Let's now come out of accessibility. Right below that, we've got a section to manage storage. You can delete unwanted apps from here or delete the recently deleted album and photos all right from this place. And even better, we've got an option to offload unused apps, meaning the phone automatically removes unused apps but keeps their documents and data which the app will reinstate after being reinstalled later. We can also manually offload apps. Given a huge chunk of iOS users still own a 16 gig i device, this should come in handy for them. And now it's time to explore the notes app. It has become truly functional. We get to scan documents, add tables, sketches, checklists, photos, and even scribble to our heart's content. 
Despite these sophisticated additions, the app remains extremely simple to use. Moving on, if you are like me and prefer single-handed usage, there's a neat little tweak in this keyboard now. Tap and hold here to enable one-handed keyboard. This makes typing in one hand a lot easier. Next up, shut down iPhone right from the settings app. Not a groundbreaking feature, but a new one worth mentioning nonetheless. There's a new emergency mode you can enable by hitting the power button five times. This disables Touch ID and Face ID, meaning nobody can forcefully place your finger on the scanner and unlock the phone. Moving on, if a fellow iOS user visits your place and wants to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you can share the password with a single tap. Nice. Another nifty little feature you might like is the automatic activation of Do Not Disturb while driving. It uses sensors to detect if you're driving and automatically enables TND. And last but not least, Maps has gone through a few changes, like the inclusion of maps of shopping malls and airports, lane guidance, and so on. Of course, these have been available in Google Maps for years now, and me personally, I'm never ditching Google Maps anytime soon. So that's it, 25 of the most useful tips and tricks that I feel you should know about. If you indeed found them useful, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to C4E Tech for more like this. Don't forget to share this video with your fellow iOS fans. Also do this to make sure you get notified each time a video goes live on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Sundar from C4E Tech, leaving for the moment. Have a nice day.